Looks awesome and definitely screams gamer. If you're a gamer, you know how important it is to have a solid internet connection when you're having those intense rivalries online. And right here today, I have a router that was made with gaming in mind. We have the Ray RGE6 Wi-Fi 6 AX6000 router. This is an HDream gaming router that has everything you can want in a router for gaming and productivity, including a 2 GHz quad-core 64-bit CPU, a 2.5 gigabit per second LAN and WAN port for hardwired connections, 160 MHz channel for 8K video streaming, 8 high-performance antennas and 8 high-powered FEMs for increased range and obstacle penetration, a one-button mesh setup if you want to have multiple nodes around the house so you can have your whole house covered in intense Wi-Fi connectivity, WPA3 security security protocol, app control on your smartphone, and even a VPN server and client if you want to mask your IP address. Now being that this is a gaming first router, there is a dedicated gaming port that you can plug an ethernet cable into to hardwire your PC or your gaming console so it can have priority over all the other connected devices when it comes to connectivity. The best thing about that, there's no special configuration you need to do, it's all automatic, just whatever you plug in there is going to have priority just like that. Now one of the things they did do to test out how well this thing can penetrate obstacles is they were able to get a 100 megabit per second connection through two walls in their testing. So that's very nice to see because usually two walls does a really good job at blocking signals from passing through, which in turn will generally lead to decreased signal quality and decreased internet connectivity speeds. So now with all that being said, let's bust inside of this box, take a look at this router, get it set up and put it to the test. Inside the box we have a Cat5e Ethernet cable, the power adapter, a warranty card, a quick installation guide to walk you through the steps of setting everything up, as well as the router itself which looks awesome and definitely screams gamer. So taking a look at this beast of a router, it looks very cool, kind of looks like a spider, looks like some kind of thing you could strap to your chest like Iron Man, but the design is only telling part of the story because it depends how well this thing can actually function performance wise. But taking a look at this thing up here on the top, we have an LED light along with the dedicated mesh button. And so with a simple press, you can connect it to another Ray router so you can have a mesh set up around your house if you want to have multiple nodes everywhere. We do have some Ray branding, another LED light up here at the top. And as you can see, we do have four sets of two antennas. Count it, that's eight antennas if you do some quick math for some great range and connectivity. As you can see, the antennas are initially pointed up, but you can also have them face inward if you need to. And I really like that. It's a very satisfying turn. Feels nice. Now flipping this thing over to the bottom, we do have four rubberized feet to keep it nice and in place on a desk. We also do have two holes here if you want to mount this to a wall. Now taking a look over here on the back, we do have a pinhole here to completely reset the device to factory settings. We have the DC power port, the 2.5 gigabit per second WAN and LAN port right here in the yellow. We do have four LAN ports as well for ethernet connectivity if you want to hardwire devices. As you can see, they actually do have labels so you know exactly what you should use with each different port. Over here though, this is the main port we're looking at, the gaming priority port. So anything that you plug into this port will have priority over all the other ports and all the Wi-Fi connected devices so you can have increased speed and low latency when you're gaming. Now of course if you happen to get this and don't happen to be a gamer, you'll still have increased connectivity for whatever you plug into it, whether it's for work, play, entertainment, whatever. So overall it's a very nice, simple, and very cool looking design. So let's get this thing set up to the modem, get it connected to the internet, and get it set up up with the app. All right, so now I have the router connected to the modem and the power, so everything is ready to go. Now, as far as getting the router set up and customized to your liking, you are able to use a web browser or the app, and personally, I always prefer to use the app if available. So we're gonna download the Ray router app from the app store and open it up. And right here, we're greeted with the screen where we're gonna add our router. So because this is a new router and we're gonna set up a new network, we're gonna say we have no old router at home and create a network. We're gonna complete these steps, power on the router, check mark, connect to the WAN port of the router, connected, next, and now we're gonna connect to the SSD that's being emitted by default from the router. So as we can see, it's right here, Ray -E -S -F -O -8 c and just like that, it automatically connected to everything, and now we're able to configure the router. So here we're able to enable or disable Smart Connect, so it's gonna emit a 2.4 gigahertz network and a five gigahertz network, so depending on your devices, you can connect to the network that you need. Now with Smart Connect, it'll automatically choose which network is best for that device and do it by itself, or you can turn this off and have two separate networks, so you can do it manually by yourself. It's up to you. 
Personally, I like to do it myself because sometimes it connects to the 2.4 gigahertz network and it's slower and I don't want it, so it's not perfect. So right here, we're able to customize the name for our SSID Wi-Fi network name for our 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz network. If you happen to go the smart connect route, you just need to make one network because it'll cover everything. Next up, we're gonna make a password. And then right here, this is actually very cool. We also do have a game Wi-Fi network, which can be dedicated to gaming only. So you can customize the name for this as well. And once again, you can make a password. You can have it the same as the other one, make it different. It's entirely up to you. And then also down here on the bottom, we have an option to keep the management password consistent with the Wi-Fi password. So if you wanna go in and adjust the different settings and configuration of the router, you're gonna need a password. And as of right now, by default, it's gonna be the same password as the Wi-Fi network. Now, personally, if you have other people using your network and they know your password, you might wanna have a separate password for this so nobody can mess with you. And just like that, as you can see, the operation was successful and we do have our new Wi-Fi networks with our passwords. We have our 2.4 gigahertz network, a five gigahertz network, as well as a gaming dedicated network. And just like that, we're brought to our home screen, which actually looks very nice and definitely looks like a gaming setup. So what I really like right away, right here at the top, we can see what data is being transferred through our network and how much is being uploaded and how much is being downloaded. That's very nice to see at a glance. I really like the animations here. We can see the router with the data being transferred over to our devices. We can tap on here. We have no clients connected right now, so very cool. Now right underneath of that, we can see our current network latency is at 37.8 milliseconds, as well as a 0% packet loss rate. So I really like this, that you can just see everything at a glance. Upload, download, latency, latency and packet loss right here. Very nice. Now, if we keep scrolling on down, we do have our game ports. You can see what device is connected. Right now, we have no device connected. And then we also have the gaming Wi-Fi, so you can connect gaming devices to the Wi-Fi as well. Currently, no device. We also do have priority devices. So if we tap on this, we can add devices here to get priority. So for example, you'd set your gaming console to be priority, and it's always going to have priority over everything else. Next up, we do have auto bandwidth control. So if you turn this on, it'll ensure uninterrupted gaming experience by prioritizing your game and suppressing high traffic applications that may cause disruptions so once again your gaming is gonna be unaffected and then next up right here we have the console booster so we have gear up console booster by default it's off but we can actually turn this on it supports game consoles like PlayStations Nintendo switch Xbox oculus and Steam decks the average latency is 20 milliseconds the average packet loss is 0% and the average speed is up by 98% so that's actually a very cool feature now if we go here on the bottom in the middle we do have scenario so if we tap on that we have parental control so you can keep your kids safe online so you can block different websites so they can't access stuff you don't want them to access we also do have the guest Wi-Fi network so when people come over you can have a separate network that they can connect to that's separate from everything else with a different password a different name and all that good stuff right here we do have healthy mode so if we go here we can actually reduce the energy conception it's basically an eco mode that can help mitigate the impact of radiation exposure so right here we're able to schedule the Wi-Fi to turn off at different times so for example if you don't want it on overnight while you're sleeping you can have it turned off automatically and then turn back on in the morning so that's a cool feature then we also have radiation control which will lower the signal strength to reduce the radiation exposure as well you know what I've actually never seen that in a router before so that's pretty cool next up we do have IOT Wi-Fi for the Internet of Things devices we can provide an independent 2.4 gigahertz channel for smart household devices to avoid interference and ensure network stability this right here is another feature I haven't really seen and I am here for it I have a ton of smart devices in my house plugs lights fans refrigerators bunch of stuff and it's always connected to the same network as everything else but right here you can give them their own network mm, love it next up we have game turbo so game turbo mode will improve the utilization of public channels and reduce the latency caused by wireless interference and provide a faster internet browsing experience nice and then finally, we do have the block list. So we can actually block different devices from connecting to the network if you so choose. And then coming up over here on the bottom, we also do have settings. So if we go here, we can see our different Wi-Fi networks and passwords, and we can update the passwords as needed. And then down here on the bottom, we do have common features as well, such as a built-in speed test, a diagnose button so you can diagnose different problems, optimize button so you can optimize your network, reboot if you wanna reboot the router, LED lights on and off, and also update the firmware. And then finally, we have advanced settings. So we can see our Wi-Fi signal strength. We can have eco mode, normal mode, or through wall mode. So it depends how much penetration you want and it'll have a stronger signal strength. As you can see right now, we do have through wall mode turn on for the best signal possible. 
Next up, we do have management passwords. So you can of course make a separate password to manage their Wi-Fi network so nobody else can do it. We do have LAN config as well. So we can customize the network with different IP addresses. We have Ruji DDNS. So if we go in here, the Ruji cloud provides the Ray gateway with a custom domain name that will automatically map the public IP address to the devices. Very cool. It's a beta version right now, but it's definitely worth trying out. Then right here, this is a very cool feature, of course, open VPN. So you can set up a VPN network on your network. So that way you don't have to do it on your client devices. So everything that's connected to your network is going to be tunneled through the VPN. So you're always protected when you're online. Next up, we do have share home network. So you can share your home network to the family or engineers. We can schedule the router to automatically reboot on certain days at certain times so you don't have to worry about doing it manually. Very nice. You should always reboot it every so often. We have port aggregation as well. So after this function is enabled, LAN 3 and LAN 4 ports are aggregated. So the rate of the aggregated interface equals the total rate of the two member ports. A maximum network speed of two gigabits per second can be provided. Then we also have languages and there's actually a bunch of languages here. Very nice. We can submit the system log and we can also see about and check for updates. So as you can see, this is a very full featured router with a bunch of features that I really like to see that I haven't seen in other routers. So I'm very impressed so far. So now, of course, we have to run a couple of speed tests to see how well this thing can actually perform. So we're going to start off with the Ray -E router. So as you can see, we were able to pull 265 megabits per second down, 64 megabits per second up and 43 millisecond ping with a jitter of three milliseconds. So very, very nice. And now just for comparison, let's actually compare it to my Linksys Wi-Fi 6E router. And it looks like the Linksys router pulled 278 megabits per second down, 61.9 megabits per second up with a 44 millisecond ping and a four millisecond jitter. So as you can see, both routers are very, very comparable which is actually pretty surprising considering the Linksys is a Wi-Fi 6E and the Ray E is only Wi-Fi 6. So now I feel like it's time to run a couple of speed tests all around the house to see how well this signal can reach different areas. So what better place to start than in the movie theater? We're about 100 feet away and there's two rooms between me and the router, so there's definitely some obstacles. And as we can see, the Linksys has a slight edge as far as the download speed goes, but overall they have very similar results. Let's move on to the living room where people tend to live. Right now, I'm all the way downstairs. Meanwhile, the router is upstairs and all the way at the other corner of the house or pretty much end to end. It looks like the Ray has a slight edge as far as the download speed goes, but a significantly better upload speed. That's impressive. But what about the kitchen? Right now I'm in the dining room, which is also a complete opposite corner of the router and also downstairs while the router is all the way upstairs. To be fair, I always have trouble hanging onto a Wi-Fi connection from the Linksys router when I'm in this area. As you can see, both routers are juggling between two and three bars. However, the Ray looks like it's doubling both the download and the upload speed of the Linksys with a stronger overall connection. Very impressive results. But would this really be a fair test if we didn't go to the backyard? Because of course you want to have your whole property blanketed in Wi-Fi coverage. So right now I'm all the way at the end of the backyard and the router is literally on the other side of the house inside and upstairs. So we're pretty far away. And yet the Ray is coming through with a significantly higher download and upload speed than the Linksys Wi-Fi 6E router. Honestly, I'm a bit mind blown right now, but what about a 2.5 gigahertz test while we're out here all the way far away from the router as well? Now to be fair, both of them are pretty bad when compared to the five gigahertz connection. However, the Ray is getting better results than the Linksys, especially when we're looking at the upload speed. That's just crazy. But what about if we're actually in the same room with the router on a 2.4 gigahertz connection and it looks like the Ray is once again coming out as the clear winner here. Honestly seeing these results is insane because the Linksys router is a Wi-Fi 6E router at more than twice the price of the Ray. Color me surprised. Now back to the studio. So all in all, the Ray Wi-Fi 6 router is very, very impressive. Not only does it have a really cool game style design, but it also functions just as well. We have solid internet speeds, gaming works beautifully, the penetration through walls is fantastic, the range is great. The app, I mean, come on, the app. It's very functional and has a bunch of features that I would love to see in literally every router, but they don't have it. This one has a bunch of features I never thought I'd see. Some of my favorite ones, gaming priority mode, internet of things connected devices on a separate network. Come on now, that's a big one. 
and even healthy mode to reduce radiation levels, which is a first for me. I've never seen that before in any other router, and that's very cool to see. This router is working great whether you want a game, enjoy content, or just use it around the house for all the connected devices that you, of course, have in the year 2023. Overall, very, very impressed with the design and the functionality of this router, and I have no complaints with it.